So we're going to start here discussing section 5.1 of your text, which primarily concerns itself with the unit circle. Now, if there's one fundamental object that we're going to be studying this semester, it's based on this idea of the unit circle. Almost everything we do is going to look at this from the perspective of here's a circle, and the radius is 1. So we've got the points 1, negative 1, negative 1, positive 1, all the way around. If you remember from an algebra course, the formula for a circle centered at the origin of radius 1, x squared plus y squared equals 1. That gives us the formula for everything that's on that red circle. Every single point that's on there is going to satisfy that equation. So, for example, if I wanted to look at the point, say, square root 3 over 3 and square root 6 over 3. Now, I'm not going to try to turn these square roots into decimal approximations with my calculator. That's just going to lead to inaccuracies down the line. It's a good rule of thumb throughout this course, unless you are specifically told to approximate something, leave it as a square root. Most of the values we're going to work with in here are going to be irrational. It's a good idea to leave them alone. But is this on unit circle? We can check. Square root over 3 squared plus square root over 6 over 3 squared. And from the last page, we know we're looking for x squared plus y squared to equal 1. For any coordinate, x, y, anywhere along here, I want the sum of the squares to be 1. So, if I look at these two points, this is the x-coordinate, this is the y-coordinate, square them, sum the results, and I'm left with 3 over 9 plus 6 over 9 plus 9 over 9, which equals 1. So in that way you can check just about any point and see if it's going to be on the unit circle or not. The other thing we're kind of interested in, again I'll start with my unit circle, Unless I specifically say otherwise, well, that's a bad circle, but unless I specifically say otherwise, assume that if I draw a circle, I'm drawing the unit circle. It's going to be a circle of radius 1. And a question I might ask, if I have a circle of radius 1, what is its circumference? That is the area, if I start here, and I move all the way around, what's that distance all the way around? Well, circumference is equal to 2 pi times the radius, but a radius in this case is 1. So the total distance, if I was to start here, travel all the way around the border of my circle of radius 1, I'm going to have a total distance of 2 pi traveled. And if I start, some point, travel around the circle for a ways, we'll start there on the circle, we'll travel around some distance. There's some positive distance, t, that I traveled, and this point right here at the end, I'm going to be looking for that, it's called a terminal point. So for example, if I have a terminal point t equals pi, well, I look at my unit circle and I say the total circumference from here all the way to here is 2 pi. So if t is equal to pi, I'm starting there. I've traveled around the unit circle 
1 pi, and then I want to know what's that point. That point right there. I know it's coordinates because I know this distance is 1. From there to there is 1, from there to there is 1, there to there, there to there. It's always 1. So if I have a terminal, uh, or a length rather, of pi, the point that I want that corresponds with it is going to be negative 1, 0. The coordinates of that point are exactly there. If instead t was equal to, let's say, negative pi over 2. Now, again, if I'm going to measure something this way and call it positive, I should be able to measure it this way and call it negative. And the distance around the circle, whether I'm going this direction or this direction, is always 2 pi. That's the circumference of a circle of radius 1. So if I start and I head out this direction, pi over 2, well, 1 half is 1 fourth of 2. So pi over 2 is 1 fourth of 2 pi, so I'm going to be traveling a quarter of the way around the circle. So if t is negative pi over 2, I might start there, travel one quarter of the way around the circle until I hit that point there, and I know that the x-coordinate of this point down here at the bottom is 0, y-coordinate looks to be negative 1, so the terminal point associated with the number negative pi over 2 is 0, negative 1. And that works great if I'm coming up against something where I'm butting up against the axes, but what if I had instead t equals pi over 4? How would I figure that out? If I look at the circle, I should be doing something like that, and pi over 4 well, how many uh, pieces do I have to divide 2 into to get 1 fourth? I'm going to have to divide it up into 8 chunks. So if 2 pi is all the way around, pi over 4 is about an eighth of the way around. So I should be looking for some point. Oops, where did we go? There we go. Some point right around there. Well, what we want to notice is that pi over 4 is exactly the same distance there as it does there. It's halfway along that arc. So I should be able to take a nice diagonal line and split it exactly in half. Now, if this distance here is the same as this distance here, what I've got is that normally this point would correspond x squared plus y squared equals 1, right? For as, as it would for any point on the unit circle. But that diagonal line, if those distances are the same, that diagonal blue line is the line y equals x. Which means that the uh, this coordinate in black is really represented by x squared plus x squared equals 1. They're both the same thing. So 2x squared equals 1 x squared equals 1 half, and then x equals plus or minus 1 over the square root of 2. But look where we are. This is what we just got from solving the algebra. There is a plus or minus in there. We had to do that because we took roots. But look where we are. We are at some physical point on the circle in the first quadrant where the x coordinate is positive and the y coordinate is positive. So that black point is the point 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. Or if you rationalize the denominator, as we often do, root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. You can apply this kind of a technique by figuring out what the slope is going to be of the line passing through the point. That will give you some relationships between the x and y coordinates, just like we had with this blue line here plugging back in to the equation for the unit circle. 
you can find some of the angles. Or, uh, I, sh I guess I, I shouldn't really say angles, um, but some of these terminal points for a given length around, around the unit circle. So there's a, a nice chart that we can look at that helps us sort these things out. If I've got given t, there are some really common uh, lengths that we want to concern ourselves with. 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. And for each one of these points, I can come up with an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate that are going to match. And it turns out what I get, if I can count backwards from 4, I can remember these pretty readily. The x-coordinate when t is equal to 0, square root of 4 over 2, which reduces to 1. The x-coordinate when t is pi over 6, square root of 3 over 2, that doesn't reduce at all. When t is pi over 4, we get square root of 2 over 2, exactly what we saw on the last page. When t is pi over 3, we get square root of 1 over 2, which is just a half. And when t is pi over 2, we get square root of 0 over 2, which is just 0. But check out these points. Square root of 0 over 2, square root of 1 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, square root of 4 over 2. They counted right up. They work out really nicely. Now, for these points with the corresponding y-coordinates, I also think this part's pretty cool. I'm just going to go in the opposite direction. So I'm going to go at 0, 1 half, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, and 1. 0, 1 half, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, and 1. So putting these together, the corresponding uh, points that are actually on the unit circle, these are all in the first quadrant. 1, 0, root 3 over 2, 1 half, root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, just we got before, 1 half, root 3 over 2, and 0, 1. So we get reference numbers for all these different arc lengths along the unit circle. Uh, and you see some nice examples in your text in section 5.1 where they extend this to going all the way around the unit circle. Because we've got this nice symmetry, the circle is centered at the origin, you can use these to find almost any reference, uh, reference number that you need as you move around and, and find these terminal points for these given arc lengths.